and welcome to our 1230 Open Stem Community Conference presentation titled Open Entrepreneurship or Exploring How Entrepreneurs Build Social Capital in a Private Collective Community. I would ask the audience to hold their questions until the end of the uh, presentation. At this time, I'd like to introduce our esteemed guests and speakers, uh, Yesnif Yetsin, or Yetis is a PhD candidate in the Department of Marketing and Strategy at the Stockholm School of Economics. She is focused on open innovation and is particularly interested in the social dynamics of open source communities, the global platforms, and offer different means of organization, organizing economic activity and knowledge creation. She investigates how these online communities self-organize and govern themselves and the role of that entrepreneur that entrepreneurship plays in these communities. With her is Robert Teagland. Robert is an associate professor of the Center of Strategy and Competitiveness in the Stockholm School of Economics in Sweden. Her research interests focus on relationship between knowledge flows and networks and performance in the individual, organizational, and national levels. Also is Paul M. Diganji. Paul is an associate assistant professor at the University of Alabama at Birmingham, USA. His research focuses on the intersection of social and digital networks and organizations for value creation purposes. Please give them a warm, warm welcome, our speakers. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to present our um, presentation on open entrepreneurship, exploring how entrepreneurs build social capital in an open source community. As Dave introduced us, um, it is Robin Tagland, Paul Diganji, and uh, myself, Zeynep Pietish, who have worked on this paper. Uh, and we're very happy to present it here at the Open Simulator Conference today. So this is what we'll be going through today. So we will first give you uh, some information about the background of our research and our motivation for um, writing this paper and doing this research. We will also uh, tell you more about the theory and our research questions, how we built up our research questions. Uh, thirdly, we are going to tell you about how, uh, what kind of methods we use and the results we got um, from the study. Uh, later, we will, uh, we will discuss uh, the results and we will talk about the limitations of our study. Uh, and we would like to also take your questions um, once the presentation um, ends. So, uh, our starting point is that um, there are two models of knowledge creation. One is the one that is uh, conducted by companies like Microsoft, uh, in which uh, companies uh, with employees and organizational boundaries, knowledge is created and inno innovations um, come about. Uh, on the other side, we have the collective like open, open Simulator community or like Linux community. These are environments built by users and uh, it's distributed f freely regardless of affiliation. Some researchers have uh, called this type of knowledge creation as a third mode of organizing economic activity. Interestingly, we're seeing more involvement of firms in open source communities. More and more firms are becoming part of this knowledge, distributed knowledge creation. Companies include IBM and, uh, and Intel or Oracle. And companies also share experiences with the community and co-create knowledge. These communities are seen as complementary assets to be leveraged and combined by these companies and they think that these can deliver competitive solutions to, for them. However, resources of the community are outside the boundaries of it. That's why it needs to, these companies need to embed themselves in the community to, to leverage them. 
there has been some studies about how, how firms influence, strategically influence these communities in different ways to make uh, use of these communities. There is also, a, there's also um, this, uh, in, in models of knowledge creation, there is also this uh, difference between the private and the collective side of things. So on the one side we have entrepreneurs who are driven by personal vision and knowledge to realize an idea for a new venture and they're um, sometimes driven by, uh, most of the time driven by uh, monetary motives. But on the other side we have the collective which is built by a lot of uh, people. It's not only a person who is uh, who wants to make money out of this. So it's built by these users distribute and distributed free, freely regardless of affiliation. So at this tension point we developed our research question which is um, about how the entrepreneur tries to leverage the community and how it builds a social capital as a means to influence the community. So we're looking at this strategy taken by the entrepreneurs and the different ways that the entrepreneur does to leverage and influence the community for uh, his or her business. So we will also talk about our theory and research questions. So, uh, in the social capital literature, social capital is um, defined by the resources embedded in a social structure. And these resources can be accessed or mobilized in purposive action by the individual. And we're very much interested in the entrepreneur and the, how the entrepreneur leverages the resources in the community, in the open source community. And in social capital theory, um, there are three pillars to the. Um, uh, there are three pillars to social capital. One of them is structural, so it looks at how social capital um, is leveraged uh, through networking, and it looks at the network patterns. And the other one is the cognitive capital, which is about the culture, norms, expectations. And the third one is relational capital, and it's about the shared understanding of a group, in this case, the open source community. So we have, un under our overarching research question, which is how the entrepreneurs build the community's social capital as a means to influence the community, we have three different research questions underneath. So the first one relates to the structural capital, so we're interested in how do entrepreneurs position themselves in the open source community. The second one is about the cognitive capital aspect and we're interested in how do the entrepreneurs shape the culture of the community as a means to influence the community. And thirdly, is it's about the relational capital and here we're interested in how do entrepreneurs contribute to shared understanding in the community? So within social capital theory, uh, Nahapiat and Goshal in their 1998 paper, they had different uh, three, they, they looked at the three different pillars, three pillars of social capital. So then in our research, for the structural capital, we would like to have a look at entrepreneurs and how they position themselves within the community to access resources. Secondly, we look at the ability of entrepreneurs to develop a shared understanding of foster collaboration. For This is for the cognitive capital aspect. And for the relational capital, we look at the ability of the entrepreneur to identify with subset of overarching network through common attribute. And our setting is the Open Simulator community. Um, over the last two years, we interviewed 
some members of the community and we looked at the different sources of information that are available in the community. Uh, so we mainly use two methods. One of them is text analysis and the other one is social network analysis. So for the text analysis, we scraped the developer mailing list from the Open Simulator website and uh, looked at the different discussions that are taken, that are done in, in the mailing list. We also had a look at the OLO commit list in which the different uh, developers and users can uh, actually uh, rate themselves, their contributions. Uh, we also used the information on the Open Simulator wiki. Uh, we also used a lot of blogs, home pages um, of the members, both developers and users uh, of the Open Simulator community. And we do up 21 interviews, very, very interesting interviews. And uh, we, at this point, would also like to thank to the members of the Open Simulator community um, for their time, because sometimes even when we um, when when we had uh, when we agreed to have like an hour interview, sometimes we could talk with the developers and the users for like two hours, even longer. So it was very interesting that, um, and it, it was very nice that a lot of people actually. Um, agree to you know help us and give their idea about what's going on in the community that was very um, very important insight for us um, so we actually divided the period uh, the, the data into two periods one of them is from August 2007 uh, till uh, September 2009 and the second period we um, we, we, we determined it as from October 2009 till October 2011. Uh, and the reason why we did is that we want to have a look at how the open simulator community changed and developed. So we want to have two time periods. And not only because these time, pe time periods um, are around two years each, uh, but also at the end of September 2009, the hype around virtual worlds um, de decreased a bit. And uh, also, there were more people actually that were um, going into the user developer user mailing list. So um, we could see that there was like a structural difference be between um, these two two time periods. So uh, as for the methodology, um, as I mentioned, the structural capital is about individuals position within the network so in order to understand entrepreneurs position in the open simulator community we conducted network analysis and we looked at uh, at a different a lot of different measures to understand how entrepreneurs position themselves and some of them are centrality structural whole measures density measures and for the cognitive capital side we are interested we were interested in looking at the shared language uh, in the in the community among the entrepreneurs so we we looked at we did some uh, text analysis uh, and generated word word burst lists uh, I will also talk more about this we also did code analysis contributions we also looked at the co uh, contributions to code rep repository for the relational capital aspect uh, so we were interested in the ability of the individual to identify with subset of overarching network through a common attribute and uh, we looked at the heterogeneity of ties so how the, the identification with groups and we also looked at the turnover among different groups so when we looked at the collapse node structure um, in uh, f for the for the different groups. Oh, uh, and I forgot to mention that we actually tag the different members of the community according to their organizational affiliations, and we had several groups, including academics, entrepreneurs, hobbyists, uh, large firm employees, uh, small firm employees, research institutes, um, and NGOs. And we when we looked at the group the collapse node structures we saw that entrepreneurs 
are very central as a group, not only individually, but as a group, they're very central in the network. And this was the case for both of the time periods. Um, as you can see in the slide, in the second period, um, centrality changed, it shifted a little bit, uh, where also uh, academics and hobbies uh, became quite big. Uh, but still, we can see that entrepreneurs were quite central in both of the periods as a group. When we look at the individual nodes uh, in the social network, we also see that individually entrepreneurs are quite central as a group. And uh, in, in period one, ne network density is even higher, but in both periods, if you have a especially focus on the red dots, which represent the entrepreneurs, they're very central in the network. When we looked at the different network measures, we also saw that for, for network measures like degree, closeness, betweenness, eigenvector, structural holes, they we, we saw that these uh, measures were very high for entrepreneurs, again. So, in a way, entrepreneurs are positioned to receive information qu quickly and near important members of the community. doesn't matter if uh, entrepreneurs or academics. And uh, they bridge disparate sections of, the, uh, sections of the community across time periods. And when we had a look at the ALDO committers, and uh, as I mentioned before, ALDO commit list, uh, there you can see how the different members of the community um, rate themselves, their contributions. We see that entrepreneurs are the largest contributing group of the core developers and overall community to the code rep repository. So in the first period, in the all the top 20 committers, entrepreneurs, constitute 55% of the total committers. And the second period, it's 45%. So these are very large numbers, and we can see that entrepreneurs really have a central role. For the cognitive capital, to understand cognitive capital, how entrepreneurs um, contribute to cognitive capital, uh, we did a worst birth, birth analysis. Worst birth anal word burst analysis uh, give information about the topics that different groups talk about uh, in the community. And we use the mailing list to do this analysis. Uh, and when we look at what look at the discussions that entrepreneurs are having in the developers mailing list, um, we we see that entrepreneurs talk about real world real world applications of the open simulator code the software, and they ensure the development of activities that are relevant to a diverse membership. But one thing that was quite interesting, uh, interesting when if you look at the period two's uh, word burst analysis, the first word that comes up is we. So it's also interesting to see that entrepreneurs, maybe when they talk about different issues, they still have this um, idea of the group. And instead of saying a lot of I's, they say we, even though um, we're talking about entrepreneurs and you would think that entrepreneurs um, maybe would be more egocentric and they would talk about their business and so forth. But we, we actually see that they, they um, really um, talk about, they, they care about the other entrepreneurs and they talk about it as a group. When we also looked at the heterogeneity scores, which gives that, uh, which gives us information about the different groups and how they relate to uh, other members of the community. We see that entrepreneurs maintain the most diverse ties in the community. So we think uh, they might be doing that to get a wide variety of per perspectives for their business. So in a way, um, they're like a social glue in the community. And also um, for the relational capital aspect, again, 
th this was a very interesting um, diagram. Uh, here, the red dots represent members of the community who were active in both of the periods, whereas the blue one is the newcomers, so it's the people who are actually who joined the community in the second period, and the yellow one, yellow ones are the people who were active in the first period but then left the community. What was interesting to see um, was that entrepreneurs act as greeters for new members in terms of recruitment, information, guidance, and training. You can see that the there are these red dots in the middle of the blue group in the uh, right side of the diagram. And actually, those people are, uh, are, um, are entrepreneurs, mainly. So, as for our contributions with this research study, so we asked the, in the beginning, we asked the question of how do entrepreneurs build the community's social capital as a means to influence the community. So for the structural capital, we found that entrepreneurs position themselves as a core and they don't only do it individually, but also as a group and bridge across the community. For the cognitive capital side, Entrepreneurs ensure focus of community on real-world applications and relevance. And here again, um, I should mention that the, commun the, the group feeling of entrepreneurs was an interesting result that we got um, out of this study. For the relational capital aspect, entrepreneurs create social glue across community members with diverse interests and goals. So we have a couple of really interesting results on how entrepreneurs contribute to the building of intellectual capital in the community. So entrepreneurs access to parties to exchange and combine intellectual capital. They em embed themselves through the co community and serve as bridges across different groups, not only among each other but across groups. And therefore, they serve to both facilitate information di diffusion, but also combination of exchange of experiences across the network. They also anticipate the value of combining exchange and intellectual capital. So as entrepreneurs are clearly visible within the community in building all three components of social capital, both the structural, cognitive, and relational, and their participation lead to expectancy by others that the community will create something of value. So they're really good ambassadors for the open simulator community. They also have the motivation to combine and exchange intellectual capital. So through building cognitive and relational capital, they enable higher levels of trust and decreasing propensity for opportuni opportunism and free writing by others. So they also encourage others to contribute to the community. They also uh, contribute to the combination capability. So at individual levels, entrepreneurs maintain really diverse networks to gain access to new information and novel information. But they also collaborate with other entrepreneurs to realize these opportunities through exchanges of resources. And these actions support development of communities' combinative capability. So entrepreneurs contribute to the community's ability to create intellectual capital, which is important for community sustainability. And um, I should also add that this was actually our starting point, the starting point of our research program. What sustains the community? is a very interesting question for us. So what makes the community sustain itself and why does it live on? And at this point, it's, it's quite interesting to see that entrepreneurs um, are actually uh, agents that affect the sustainability of the community. But we also see that the community provides entrepreneurs to access to, to diverse uh, sets of resources and enable them to identify and realize opportunities. And this is very important for entrepreneurs' business. 
And this is actually really the core idea of our study. It's, it's this idea of open entrepreneurship. We see that entrepreneurs engage in so social capital building, but in order to do that, they have to freely reveal, freely reveal their intellectual property from time to time, quite often actually in this case. But at the same time, um, they, they also contribute to, to other resources uh, for the community. What they get, get back uh, from the community is, um, is also a lot of resources. So it is this, uh, this relationship between the community and the entrepreneur is, is what we call open entrepreneurship. So they freely reveal their intellectual property, but they get the resources they need for their businesses. And we have three main contribution areas. One of them is the open source community literature. We saw that entrepreneurs facilitate the community's development of a combinative capability, which leads to the continuous creation of intellectual capital for the community. For the entrepreneurship literature, we uh, touched upon the importance of, we, importance of online communities to entrepreneurs as arenas for building social capital. This also um, shows that there is this dialectical view of entrepreneurs as individuals who pursue both self and collective interests. For the social capital literature, apply social capital theory to open source community literature to show a symbiotic relationship between open source communities and entrepreneurs. And this is um, the idea about uh, open entrepreneurship. Uh, we thank you for your attention and, and we would like to get your comments and questions. Thank you. It usually takes a moment or two for everyone to formulate their questions. I'm sure we'll just wait for a few minutes and, and see if we have any from the audience. Okay, perfect. Well, so the first question is, so how many OpenCiv devs do you, did you actually talk to? So uh, in total, we conducted 21 interviews, but uh, some people we interviewed a few times, uh, not more than three. Uh, but yeah, a few people we interviewed twice and maybe one or two people three times. So I would say around um, 12, 13 people that we uh, interviewed in total, mainly core developers. And we would uh, really like to do more interviews, absolutely. Um, we will also start, um, we, we also have the idea to interview users who are not necessarily contributing a lot to the development of the code, but who are active users of the community. Well, as part of your sphere of interviewees, uh, did that include Melanie? Uh, it included Melanie. We actually interviewed her three times. It was very, very interesting talking to her. Very interesting. She's a, she's a true open entrepreneur <laughs> for us. I would say that it's quite a connected community, but what is interesting um, is that it's different across different groups and it's really we, we see that entrepreneurs are really um, connected 
among each other, but also they're very well connected to others. But if you're asking about the community in general, I, I, would, I, I, I have a tendency to say that, yes, yeah, it's, it's a very connected community. And did you study any other open source project? And is there uh, any reference or, or common thread you might see in open source projects? So we, uh, we started to, um, to research the Bitcoin community recently. Since I would say April, uh, April 2013, uh, we're at the very uh, beginning stage of that research. We're also looking at the forums. We're doing a lot of web scraping and trying to understand the different discussions in the community. Uh, we also have a lot of data there. It's around, we have around 1.15 million posts made by community members. Uh, so it will be very, very interesting to also uh, compare at points. Of course, they're very different communities. Bitcoin community is, um, is a really large-scale community, and also the focus of the community is different, but yet they're open source, so, um, so s some things are very, um, very similar, and it would be really interesting to contrast the two communities. Yeah, Robin just um, posted the link to our paper. Would be great if um, you could, we could get comments from you on that. Hi, maybe I could just say, um, hi, this is Robin talking uh, from Stockholm. Uh, in response to the question about differences, uh, I've been doing a study of um, a firm-sponsored open source community, uh, Easy Systems, and I'd say that this is, uh, this, the uh, OpenSim community is much more well-connected uh, than the Easy one. Uh, as to why, we're still, we haven't done a comparison yet, but that's actually one of the things that we're interested in doing. Hi, Krista. How are you? You were one of our interviewees as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a, it's a fantastic uh, research site. And we've really enjoyed, very much enjoyed uh, getting to know this community. And we're continuing our research. So uh, we're, we are Working hard, in fact, this is Zainab's task for the next month, right, Zainab? That's true. <laughs> All of us to um, to really focus on this and getting out a couple papers. Yeah, we'll be doing a more um, more in depth analysis of the of the mailing lists. Actually, we're planning to do qualitative coding on them. So uh, we will for sure share the paper once uh, one, once we work on them. Paul, did you have anything to add? I was just thinking if you had something to say. Okay. Paul's voice is not working, unfortunately, so. I was just wondering, is there, for those in the audience, is there anything that was perhaps a little surprising or expected um, when you saw the presentation? Actually, I was surprised at the amount of... Uh uh, entrepreneurs who were involved and uh, and that they were actually the glue of uh, what makes the, the the open sim and the grids tick yeah that was a really surprise yeah it was it was a surprise us actually I can ask you I mean why 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 did you find this surprising or unexpected 
Well, uh, the community as a whole is uh, generally, I would think, um, uh, very good at sharing things. And I wouldn't think there would be that many entrepreneurs that were trying to uh, make their living or have a side hobby type business that would make uh, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, I would see the entrepreneurs into education and um, some niche in some way. And I believe the entrepreneurs do share because they do have separate niches or separate interests. But that's just my opinion and okay. and my uh, my uh, uh, my experience. Okay. No, I mean, I can say it was surprising to me. I was not expecting uh, to see so many entrepreneurs, and not only so many entrepreneurs who were so central and so active in playing these roles. And I think what you said there was interesting in terms of the niches and how, you know, as entrepreneurs and other members of the community find their niches, um, kind of spread themselves out through the community. I think this is something that we're going to be exploring as well, looking at how individuals do position themselves in the community over time and how they play, say, bridging roles across different types of users and uh, accessing different types of resources and bringing them together. So this is actually one of the, one of the folks we're um, working on now. That is one of the areas that we did want to go through, um, was actually understanding how the different structures can help the community grow or for that matter how it just functions. Um, so one of the things we wanted to see is whether or not a particular, not just type as in terms of entrepreneur, but if a particular subtype of entrepreneur actually plays a bigger role. Yeah, that was Paul speaking. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Paul from okay. Birmingham, Alabama. So. <laughs> yes, actually, that's a very good question, Tom Williams. He asks, uh, is it because um, they are successful entrepreneurs that means they can continue to contribute? Uh, that's something that we are going to be looking into in terms of, it depends on how you define successful, uh, but in terms of what are they contributing back and how, say, accessing resources and the contribution to back, how that creates, uh, continues to sustain the community. I think actually, unfortunately, we have to wrap up here if I understood the, the, uh, the request from the, from the organizer. That's right. We're just about to close this session in oh, two or three minutes. Uh, get ready for the next session. Uh, if we have, we can probably take one or two more questions, and or one question. And if anybody has one, now's the time. <laughs> now's the time where you're welcome to contact us later. <laughs> we would love to discuss our research with anyone. So, who has an interest in it? All and right, thank you that, all for attending very much. And that wraps up our session this afternoon. Uh, very interesting and informative group. Uh, for all of you, if there were still things to do on the conference level, and uh, please go ahead and go to www.http colon or excuse me, http colon slash slash www.conference uh, org, and you'll be able to look at the uh, itinerary for the rest of the day. Uh, again, thank you for coming, and uh, enjoy your stay here. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for hosting. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.